Welcome to the Salt Circle Podcast. My name is Hank. With me today, like many days, is Ben. Hey, y'all. Hello. We're uh, we're doing a sort of a hoity-toity podcast today. Gonna get. Uh, I mean, uh, is it I'm not doing the... Shakespeare? But uh, Shakespeare is like. He's hoity-toity, but he's also not hoity-toity. I think it's I mean, the, he's pop culture in I his day. I think it's still the highest brow topic we've done. No? I don't know that it's any more hoity-toity than Gulliver's Travels. Honestly. <sighs> I don't know. I think... I think... Shakespeare for a lot of people is probably like any amount of math is for the average Eng- English major. Yes, I just think those people are wrong. Eh. I'm still like half one of those people. <laughs> yeah, here yeah, I you am. You can be wrong. I, it's fine. I, I, I'm not wrong. Just uh, in the midst no, of a wrong. metamorphosis. <laughs> I'm, I'm coming out the other side. That's why we're here. Yeah. Because we're talking about, in particular... King Lear, which, yeah, yes, that is the Shakespeare play we are talking about today. Interesting for me, I had never heard of it until I took the Shakespeare class in university. Um, in high school, we did Romeo and Juliet, and we did Macbeth at one point. Mm-hmm. Uh, did, Hamlet. Did you know that Shakespeare wrote a lot of plays. Yeah, but like. Yeah, I know, but it's like if we had come in here and said we're doing Romeo and Juliet or Hamlet or something, I feel like that's that's like your A tier, not necessarily in terms of quality, but in terms of people knowing them. Uh huh. And I, King wrong. King Lear might maybe B, maybe Macbeth is like B, just because people Macbeth is, might be A tier. Yeah, it's in that gray area. Yeah. I think I think Lear is B or C. Generally, yeah, sure. Like yeah yeah that's that's my thinking, and it's uh I I I didn't like it I I didn't like King Lear, <laughs> and I didn't like Shakespeare, and uh-huh. it got to the end of the semester and we had to write a final paper and it was like a lot of people might scoff, um, especially anyone doing like a thesis like phd nonsense or whatever where it's like a hundred pages but uh like 10 pages on a single topic of a single shakespeare play that feels like a lot (laughs) that feels like a lot dude and especially when you're going in like hating the subject matter but (laughs) through writing the paper which was which was on king lear um Uh i like came out the other side I've, I like got to the I got to the end of this paper and I looked at it and I was like this is a good paper, and I guess I kind of like King Lear now. Fuck you, professor who converted me to liking something. How dare you, changing my opinion? What a piece of shit. So like what, what was like the biggest flip from what you really didn't like to what you kind of changed your mind or just there wasn't see something different i don't even think i don't even think there was like a specific thing i didn't like i think it boils down to some of the some of the beefs i still have which may just be lack of exposure and also doing anything in a class when you're on a time period and being graded on it feels a lot worse (laughs) than just doing it on your own um like, I wasn't a fan of having to read, like, oh, hey, we're doing uh, King Lear on Thursday. If you could have it read in its entirety by Tuesday, that would be great. Uh, professor, today is Friday. Yeah, it is. You're right. <laughs> like, just not a fan of that. And then, to an extent, reading plays. But I also don't know if it would function better if I watched it i'm not sure but what i think converted me over was that in 
in the analysis, just um, I guess uh, on a on a surface level, finding like the the redemption, re like fallen from grace, not necessarily grace, but you know, fallen and then sort of redemption sort of thing, and more importantly, for some reason, like the emotional connection just kind of clicked, and I was like, oh shit, this is this is pretty good. <laughs> Like this is, this is this is some good stuff. Just like, do you think it was just the the language barrier was like preventing you from getting into it? Uh, there's a bit of that. That certainly it compounded the uh, the time constraint. I but, think. Yeah, and also just the reading a play. Yeah, that 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 kind of has a different. It has a very different, different feel. feel to it, and it's it's not yeah. something that you do a whole lot. So, no, it's it's kind of a different thing. The language definitely just I am, and the art professor even told us like, just kind of read it like you're reading a foreign text that's not translated and you barely know the language. Like skim over it and try to grasp what you can and kind of ignore the separate novel that is the footnotes. And I got a bit better at that, but I'm still pretty terrible at ignoring all of that stuff like if i see a word and i don't know what it is and the definition is like a centimeter away in the margin i want to read that definition <laughs> instead of skimming yeah. it but yeah just the time constraint and then that language just i'm i don't necessarily dislike it but i'm very slow with it still like, mm -hmm. even when I, like, just reading through everything, like, I will read this, and then I will immediately spark notes it to make sure that I understood everything that I read, because I, I'm not sure sometimes. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, there's definitely times when I'm reading a, a play for the first time, I'll just miss stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, somehow, I always... When I would read King Lear, I would always skim over Edmund's first speech too much. <laughs> and, like, Fair. he wouldn't register to me as, like, <laughs> important. Yeah. <laughs> Which is weird, because his first speech is, like, super important. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and also, I have a friend that thought that's, like, his favorite thing that first Edmund speech he really likes it it's definitely his favorite, his favorite thing in the play at least and one of his favorite Shakespeare things period so uh the first that's uh that's where you it's find a speech out. about being a bastard yeah 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 okay and he's kind of it's like the one place where he says his plan mm -hmm. and then it kind of just happens without him kind of being on screen for a lot of it or on stage, rather. Yeah, no, he didn't really have to work very hard to, <laughs> to like, facilitate things. Kind of yeah. help. I mean, it kind of helps when everyone else is kind of a dick, so. Uh-huh. Yeah. No, the, the character that really resonates with me in King Lear is King Lear. Just his fucking angry-ass, super way too quick to judgment, like... Yeah, that guy's a star because <laughs> stuff happens because of his like split judgments, and then he yells at a storm, which is also just a thing I always love. Also, uh, like like when Zuko yelled at a storm, like when Zuko yelled at a storm, yeah, yeah, redemption. It's right there. It's right there. Um, yeah, no, King, like the character King Lear is. Uh, pretty good i like how i just the start in in retrospect like hey uh i heard that you would like some inheritance um there's three of you tell me how much you love me right now to mm -hmm. my face <laughs> be specific <laughs> i need details yeah need it um should we like outline the plot the g very general plot of the play before like dive or do we want to do like do the plot as we go and like talk about parts of it probably should have discussed we should this we should just outline the plot first okay I would say. all right 
do you oh, well the first thing that happened was the, <laughs> i'm gonna need help in some parts um okay there are certain things that i'm very good on and then there's like other parts that i'm just still hazy on uh-huh even reviewing um, yeah, so the first thing that happens was the thing I said with uh, with the love thing. Uh, King Lear is kind of sick of being, at least not necessarily being the king, but all the kingly duties, right? He wants the title, he doesn't really want all the paperwork and the hassle and the bullshit. And his daughters are like a thousand percent ready to, you know, get their inheritance early, become the ruler the de facto rulers and stuff and there's a uh, i don't i don't like two of them uh there is goneril which is the oldest one there is reagan the middle daughter and there is cordelia who is the youngest um mm-hmm. goneril is in no goneril is not engaged but her in the duke of albany I forget who, I forget uh, how that little, or just, no, not Duke of Albany, just Albany. Um, mm-hmm. The husband, I'm looking at, I have a character list open, because I knew this would be my, my worst part. Yeah. The husband of mm-hmm. Lear's daughter, Goneril. All right, cool. Um, so that's the thing. And, yeah, King Lear is like, hey, you guys, tell me how much you love me, and I will give you your your stuff based on that. So Goneril goes in this little bit, just sucking ass, and he's like, wow, wow, you love me so much. Have these wide tracts of land and all this other shit. And then he's like, Reagan, what's up? How much do you love me? And Reagan sucks even more ass and he's like oh my god you love me so much here you go and he gives her more land and then he gets the youngest daughter Cordelia and he's like Cordelia how much do you love me and she has a really good quote here and I oh uh, she she says that she has like nothing to say King Lear is like yeah. nothing begets nothing and she's like yeah <laughs> um <laughs> so it's pretty great I, is that the part she has like a bit about uh Maybe she, maybe it, it's just like an aside, where she talks about how like the love that can be quantified like doesn't matter, or something, or like love that yeah. needs to be quantified. It's something along those lines. Like if you have to quantify the love, it's not worth anything. And she, but like the point, the point of this very early, early, uh, scene is that Cordelia loves him the most. She just doesn't want like this is stupid, <laughs> and it's really fucking dumb. <laughs> Like, so she's not into uh, and King Lear does um, give her hyperbolic s- praise. Yeah, yeah. King Lear is uh, generous though, and he does give her something. The something is exile, which she accepts <laughs> graciously and isn't seen for a long time. So that happens. Um, and then, I, is there anything immediately after? Is well, Edmund seen two, right in there. Her two suitors show up. Right, the the Duke of Burgundy and the King of France, and the uh, Duke, when Cordelia? and they're like uh, for Cordelia, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So then, right, um, right, right. and they're like, "Yo, where's that? Where's that dowry? Where's that uh, inheritance?" And King Lear's like, "There's none now." And Duke of Burgundy is like, "I'm out, peace." Yeah. And King of France is like, "Yeah, Cordelia is pretty great though. That's yeah. you're being weird." But okay, I'll still marry her, and then they they leave basically, mm-hmm. and then Kent is pissed. He's like, yeah. well, "What the fuck are you doing?" Yeah. Yep. Um. Yeah. Feel free to interject if I miss like anything. Yeah, and then or... Kent gets banished for speaking up against King Lear. Also, and wasn't he like? Yeah, he was like pretty. He's like loyal to King Lear too. Like he's a. Yep. He's one of the. He he's similar to Cordelia, like he's he's yeah. loyal to King Lear. He enjoys, not maybe not his company, but like he, he he's loyal. That's the end game, and Lear just shits on him. Well, he doesn't like being talked back to. I mean, yeah, obviously, <laughs> look, he's you very. Do, you say nothing, firm. you get exiled. You say something, you get banished. Like, <laughs> look, he's an old man. He's <laughs> yeah. cranky. Give him give me my proper respect, or get the fuck out. Mm-hmm. 
daughter who loved me the most <laughs> not gonna praise me? Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's great. It's it's there's like I understand the emotion behind it. It's just like it's stupid, but I understand. Yeah. <laughs> um my favorite um line about Lear comes later when the fool is like uh, you fucked up. You should have grown wise before you grew old. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes. And then, then it's the soliloquy. Or is there other? Yeah, then we get Edmund... Oh, I don't before think that, we need to go that yeah. much in detail with this plot. Yeah, um, we obviously. But yeah, yeah. the Do next you... the next at scene is Edmund starts with Edmund's speech about his plan. Yeah, so there is this dude Gloucester. Uh, Gloucester. Gloucester, I think. Gloucester. I'm not sure. Oh boy. I we did Gloucester in class, but like Gloucester, okay, if Gloucester. It's Gloucester in class. I, you I, were doing a class on it. I just read it today. Now I'm like After years. <laughs> I'm questioning if I ben didn't Hanks. pay attention enough. <laughs> um, ben ben, I mean Gloucester. King Lear. Gloucester also has a uh, fewer syllables, so. <laughs> <That's true. clears throat> Yeah, Gloucester is a, a nobleman, and he has two sons. There's Edmund, and there's Edgar. And Edgar is his real son. Well, his... They're not both his real son. Yeah, he's, I mean... His legitimate Edmund's son. Edmund's a bastard, literally. Yeah. And he's unhappy about it's it. It's great. And Gloucester There are times is... when the, in, the, in the play, it's just bastard, <laughs> brackets Edmund. Mm -hmm. It's like, <laughs> he is, that is who he is, is yep. a bastard. So, yeah, he's, he's like, secondary. he's upset about that, basically. Like, he is not, he does not yeah. wear it well. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And so he plots to basically fuck over fuck. Edgar and take yeah. over all his dad's yeah. stuff. Just a real prick. Actually, Which our, uh... Inherent power, because... Fuck ever, fuck the world. Our professor gave us a handy little tip. You know that Edmund is bad because there's an M in his name. Like, there's an M in malicious. And in Edgar's name, there's a G, like in the word good. <laughs> That's <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> and dumb. Just has no expectations for us reading this play. Um, <laughs> so yeah, Edmund... Stalactite, stalagmite. Bullshit yeah, going dude. On here. Yeah, so Edmund has like it's it's mostly against just Edgar and he, there's like a, a forgery. He like forges a letter or something. I forget exactly what goes down to who, but he's trying to turn Gloucester against Edgar. So like their father mm -hmm. against Edgar. And Yeah, sure. That's a that's a thing. Back to King Lear, though. The important, important this, uh, important part to this. So initially, he is still living that high life. Like he gets to kind of be a king. He doesn't have to deal with the uh, the bureaucracy of the whole affair. And him and his knights are just partying. Essentially, it's like the jellyfish yeah. party episode of SpongeBob. Like just constantly it won't let up yeah he keeps a hundred nights and he's like i'm gonna spend half my time with one of my daughters and half the time with the other one Just yeah go back and forth yeah so uh he starts out with the eldest daughter like in her cat well that's what we start out with him and gunner is just sick of him like i mean if you could imagine like 101 people like riding in your house all the time <laughs> essentially like you know Especially when you have other people working in that house and living there who have jobs and things to do. So she gets sick of it and, like, I don't know if she allows or orders, like, her house to be rude to them. But 
everybody starts kind of not respecting Lear, and she's cool with it, whichever one it is. So, eventually Lear gets all pissed, and he goes to Reagan's castle? He goes to, like, the second daughter's yeah. land. The, the other thing you skipped was, um, after getting exiled, Kent basically immediately, when you're reading the play, oh, shows right, up. right, right. This disguise, calling himself Caius, and uh, gets himself hired on to be basically his old job. <laughs> yeah, because he he knows what makes he knows how to get in with Lear. So Lear is just like, "Hey, you seem pretty cool," and basically hires him as his advisor again. And just remember that in Shakespeare, disguise means you basically wear a hat. Yeah, and but like no one can tell. No one. Literally fucking no one. It's impossible. Closest, p- your parent. <laughs> it's just, yeah, no. Nope. Like, in other plays, it's like, you're wearing a, it's like you're wearing a fedora and trench coat in a comic book. It's just, no yeah. one can see, tell yeah. who you are. Or like, in other plays, sometimes you're in a disguise, and then you die. And then the person whom you are imitating in that disguise... Their wife comes along and sees you beheaded and thinks it's her husband, despite the fact that the head is right there, which would confirm that it's not her husband. <laughs> nope. Can't check. Wait, it's just possible. tears first, questions later. Yes. But, yeah, so he's uh, Caius and... Right, right, right. Yeah, he's, he's Lear's right-hand man again. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, Lear gets out and is uh, going to Reagan's castle. And this is actually... Yeah. Uh, Goneril is like, reduce the number of your men by half. Yeah, yeah. Like, Fuck Because when he, when he gets... Uh, I, doesn't he, like, get to Reagan's castle and, like, Goneril is there? Yeah. Well, the, yeah, she shows up. She shows and up Reagan's like. There. Like after really trying to talk him back, in, talk him into going back, she's like, "Fine, you can stay with me, but you can only have like yeah. twenty five men." And then he's like, oh, "Fuck, I guess I'll go back to Goneril. And Then Goneril's like, "Nope, go back. Only have... You get none." <laughs> yeah, it like goes. What, it, yeah, it's like twenty five, then ten, and then like one, yeah. and then like might as yeah, well they... be one, might as well be none. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they just like go... it's not learn the art of negotiation. But he kind of has no leverage, so yeah. Well, he gave up all of his shit. I mean, I I don't yeah. actually know what happens with the knights. Does he just leave them? That might that's like, skipping ahead a bit. I don't think we ever. I don't think it specifically I mean, says like. So it's a play, so they can't have knights on stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it is yeah. I'm not. We're just. I don't feel like theoretically we're they. They were going with him to France when he leaves. Mm-hmm. And I guess they get defeated when he gets captured, I assume. Yeah. So, yeah. I Gon- mean, they do spend all their time getting drunk, so I can't really imagine they were very good <laughs> fighters. Probably They're not. Just, like, party buddies. The part where I'm really not clear where they are is when he's stuck out in the rain. Like, where well, is that's, your army? Yeah, that's what they I'm saying. Like, they, that's what I'm saying. Like, I feel like they just disbanded. They're like, all right, well. Um, yeah, so Goneril and Reagan are, like, they continue to get, like, worse, basically. They they get a taste oh, yeah, of that yeah. his, power. His, his knights, they did dissolve. That's a thing that happens. Okay. Um, Before he's stuck out with just the fool and Kent. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Goneril and Reagan are like, they, they, they enjoy the power they have. They want to, like, consolidate that. They want to get all of it, so, even though Lear has, like, no knight. I don't know what power he still has. I guess the title. Like, they stole his house, but they want the deed, I guess. (laughs) Yeah, and they're still paying for, they're paying for his knights now, too, I think, because... Um, so it's kind of, I don't know. Basically, There's they like want to. They want laws to theoretically. <laughs> yeah, theoretically. 
in the extended Shakespeare canon. Um, also, yeah. like when Kent shows up at uh, Reagan's place, he gets put in the stocks like immediately. Yep, they throw him in there. Uh, Lear is upset about it, though. Mostly not. not I mean, Lear's upset about a lot of things all the time. But, like, he's not upset about it necessarily because he cares about Caius, but Caius is a servant of him, so how dare they do that to him? (laughs) Exactly. Yes. 100%. It's just, he's like, um, he gets no respect. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Like Rodney Dangerfield. Exactly. The best version of King Lear is Rodney Dangerfield playing King Lear. <laughs> oh my god. That'd be fucking great, dude. It would, it would be perfect. <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> yeah, I get no respect. <laughs> they put him in stocks. Yeah. Um. I. This is like probably the fuzziest part of the play. Um. What happens immediately after? I always get this, like, confused with the, uh... Is it the blinding of Gloucester? Does that happen after this? Well, well, no. First there's... Oh, come on. King Lear's locked out. He's yelling at the storm. Right, so we have our first storm scene. Yeah. Him and the fool. Mm -hmm. Kent's kind of just stuck there. And then Gloucester basically lets him inside. (laughs) Yeah, I, th- I think that that happens first. Then um, Edmund betrays Gloucester to Cornwall because mm-hmm. Gloucester knows about there's a French invasion coming to reinstate Lear. Yes, and then Gloucester gets his eyes. Yep, ripped out. they just like scoop him out. Basically, like it's pretty. It's brutal. Cornwall just, you know, just, I mean, you you have you have to use your imagination when you're reading a play. But yeah, he just takes one eye, and then one of the servants is like, "What the fuck are you doing?" And tax Cornwall. Don't they kill the uh, and, servant? Then? And stabs him, and yet, well, then um, I think Reagan kills him. Something, yeah. Definitely gets yeah. Reagan kill stabs him from behind. Then Gloucester, I think, takes the other eye after that, and then dies <laughs> off screen. Yeah, he's like, "Oh, I've been wounded." Yeah, and then later someone's like, "Yeah, he died." And like the first time I read the play, I'm like, "Oh, he died." Oh, I didn't pick up he was that hurt. Whoops. Yeah, I remember. I remember that happening. <laughs> That off-screen death, though. Such a classic, like, oh, no. Yeah, he died. It's classic Shakespeare. Someone showing up to say, yeah, that guy, he died. He's dead. (laughs) Oh, him? Oh. Don't worry about it. Oh, him. (laughs) Yeah. Um, And then Edgar turns up pretending to be... Tom. Poor Tom, yeah. Poor Tom. He's kind of hanging out with Lear for a while, and then eventually he finds his dad and kind of takes care of him, much like Kent was taking care of Lear by just pretending to be a totally different person. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then there's, and there's a whole thing with Edmund had a plan with uh to um kill Goneril's husband and take her throne but now that Cornwall's dead Reagan's like yo team up with me yeah and he's kind of just like uh playing them both without really without a plan he doesn't really, he's like, like at one point he's like, yeah, I can't really have both of them. It's probably not going to work. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
<laughs> it just gets like so muddled for a bit there. I mean, there there's a lot of stuff that happens, but a lot of it, like half of it is just kind Lear of, yelling at clouds. I mean, the year the the thing is, the plot doesn't matter. My end game for this whole segment was yeah, I don't think the plot is important. Yeah, but either yeah, yeah stuff stuff goes um, down. Th- there's other stuff. Um, Lear gets like. Albany and so basically the two the two sides, the force commanded by uh, Edmund to Reagan and the force and then uh, the other forces like ally together against the French capture Lear and Cordelia. Um, Edmund and Edgar end up having a fight. Edgar beats Edmund. Uh, we uh we got shit a lot confused, of people died. by the way. I wanted to what? check. Uh Cornwall is the guy who dies. Yeah. Cornwall Gloucester. Dies. Okay. We there were a lot of pronouns being tossed around. Oh. Gloucester gets yeah, his yeah, eyes. No, no. For any confusion, Gloucester... Gloucester gets his eyes plucked out. Yes. Cornwall is the one who gets wounded. Yeah, whatever. I don't know. Yes. Just, you know. I don't need to be called out by some Shakespeare professional who ends up listening to this for some reason, and then is Look, like anyone Son who of actually a bitch. knows the plot of this play is out. We've <laughs> we've really mangled and dicked around we with this. Have, I'm Shakespeare I'm done just, with this plot. He's just <laughs> I don't, turning. I also Fine. don't care. We'll just we'll just skip to. <laughs> and the, you were we were real bad at it. So I mean, I wanted like a nuts and bolts. You got. I don't know. Uh, skipping. <laughs> Skipping to the end, which is, you know, is notable. Um, Lear realizes that he's been a dick. And Cordelia die depending on the version. Like, she dies, um, but depending on the version, there's a little tiny bit more or less hint at whether she might not truly be dead. And either way, the last thing that Lear like, says before he dies is, oh, like, it worked, she's roused, she's breathing, something to that effect, and then he dies. And then the play ends, so you don't actually get to to know if Cordelia is, uh, dead. Generally, I'm pretty sure it's just assumed that she's dead, right? It's a tragedy, after all, so. Well, so it's kind of, the thing is, it's, like, based on a story where King Lear and Cordelia both live, but like the po- kind of the thing the Shakespeare version did was add in Gloucester and his sons and King Lear and Cordelia dying, making it a tragedy. Yeah, like it's not a tragedy if they don't die. Yeah, they'd have to get married. And look, exactly. <laughs> look, Shakespeare, it's it's tragedy. The characters die. Okay, it's important. It's a comedy. Some characters die. How many characters get married? Those are the well, not in the end. They can die along the way, can't they? Yes. Yeah. There you go. Probably. The important thing is death at the end or marriage at the end. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The the, the principles. Yeah. The the pillars. Part of of why I'd say the plots of Shakespeare's plays don't really matter. Yeah. Not. They're not the thing. So. Now that we have sufficiently and expertly summed up the plot of King Lear, <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't know what to, what bit do you want to focus on first? Or concept to, theme? Yeah, going through the the plot. The plot is not the thing here. the The thing is the speeches and some. For me, that's the character of King Lear more than anything. Okay. Uh, I don't. I don't really care about a lot of. A lot of the other stuff with this with this mm. play in particular, yeah. um, I can see the the argument for Edmund just because his his first speech is really good, but he's not like my favorite uh, Shakespeare villain either. So that's Iago. Yeah, Iago is my favorite. Iago, villain, right. for sure, from Othello, and that's, that's so because <laughs> more the pure hatred for an individual 
I like more than this like anger at the. I don't know. I never again. I always like. I read Edmund's first speech and I like skim over it. It just never quite connected with me. Yeah, it's not nearly full of hate. It's not enough. Where Though, it, it's overshadowed by all the shouting at storm clouds that King Lear does, which well, is my favorite stuff. As a brief aside, Othello is the Shakespeare play where I thought it all took place on boats for some reason. Like, I skimmed uh-huh. it enough that I'd at one point early on they were on a boat, and I just never hit the part where they got off, so I assumed that they continued being on a boat, and it made it a mm-hmm. hundred times more entertaining. <laughs> Like, I found out it wasn't, and I was pretty disappointed, actually. But, uh, yeah, no, King Lear, like, the, the, one of the big things is, like, Lear is out in the storm a lot, and there's a lot of, you know, it's Shakespeare, so you're gonna, you're gonna go balls deep on this. Why is it a storm? What does it represent? All that. Um, and he, he does go like insane like he descends at first like he's distressed he's he's like rejected and all that shit and then eventually like he's just naked wearing a crown of weeds and <laughs> like yelling little not like nursery rhymes like little the equivalent mm. of like sharing is caring like these little phrases that they would teach kids or something and just yeah. fully ranting and yeah. it what it what it reminds me of is um, Oedipus, because in that, it's just a thing of like, I'm the greatest, but so if I if I fall, then I will have the greatest suffering. <laughs> it's like it's like the madness and like the the fall has to be at equal to his his might and like his. It's still like an ego play. Mm-hmm. Like, it's still, like, as the character on stage has to still be the biggest thing, even when his life is a fucking disaster. Yeah. It has to be the biggest disaster that's around. Yep. Also, for a guy who's, like, really not up putting up with bullshit, he sure takes a lot of shit from the fool. <laughs> I mean, he's going crazier and crazier. The fool gets away with it, you know? Like, that's the fool's job. It it is the fool's. That's the fool's job. The fool's job is to talk shit to him. Yeah. Whereas, and in, and in Shakespeare, you, the fool is, is like, his daughter. His daughter's job is to love him the most. Yeah. Well, fucking obviously. Why else do you have daughters? Come on. Except, to pit them yeah. against each other and proving which one loves you the most. They're supposed to tell you they love you the most and then house you while you have parties. While you have giant project. No, was it Project X? What am I thinking of? The party movie. Project X was a party movie. Okay, that's what I'm thinking of. Like Project X parties in the basement with your uh-huh. knights. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know. The storm is like, it's kind of like Lear's trial-ish. Because, I don't know, he could have been broken like in one of the storm scenes, but... Instead, he, I'm not going to say pulls out of it, but there are a lot of things that point to him, like, realizing that he's been a total jackass and, like, a lot of regret and stuff. So, about by the time he dies, he's redeemed, which makes it way worse. (laughs) Redeemed. Mostly redeemed. I don't. I don't, know. I don't really. I don't really buy into the, that part of it. Really, I don't. Hmm. So I mean, you just want him to be an angry asshole. <laughs> well, well, yeah. So again, the plot I don't care about. It's the storm. There to me, it's like that's the thing that's big enough for him to play off of. Like he needs something worthy of yeah. his stage presence. It's much less, because I don't care about the story, it's much less about, like, the individual moment-to-moment stuff of, like, what matters. Like, the the turnarounds at the ends, like, the King Lear's is, like, 
fine. Like, that makes sense as the arc of the thing. The one that doesn't make any sense is Edmund's change of heart. Where he's like, oh, I guess I'll try to save King Lear and Cordelia. Oh, too late. I didn't. Yeah. And then he's like, it's not in my... And he's also like, it's not in my character at all to do this. But I'll do it anyway. Just to, you know, just to... It's, it's like, the tragedy has to happen. So... It's more tragic if they tries to save them at the last minute, but it but that's yeah it's, that's, it's, that doesn't really work. I do like um, one of my favorite. I, I'm not going to say my entirely favorite quote by Lear because I would actually need to go through it again and pay far more attention. But mm-hmm. real good one was in like late Act Four, and it's like. You, I, I, I got it up. You do me, you do me wrong to take me out of the grave. There are soul and thou art a soul in bliss, but I am bound upon a wheel of fire that mine own tears do scald, scald like molten lead. That's a good line. It's a real good one. My favorite is when, in Act Four, Gloucester is like, "Oh, let me kiss thy hand," and there's like. Let me wipe it first. It smells of mortality. Yeah, yeah, no, that's a that's a great one. <laughs> God, fucking, I love his arrogance. Yeah, it's just like, look, man, I I'm the star here. I'm the captain now. <laughs> yeah, except yeah, like... I just find that that stuff. That's my favorite stuff in Shakespeare of just like this this is the character that's the the star. This is the the performance. This is the speech. The sure. the plot so much in Shakespeare just feels like a the means to that. Like the the, mm. the thing you have the structure you need to have or whatever like the requirement. Yeah. It's the framing device basically. Yeah. yeah. I mean, really, it's all there for those dirty jokes to the audience. That's what. <laughs> that's what it's all truly yeah. about. I mean, that's what a... makes that's the pop culture appeal. Yeah, yeah. Appeal to the people. The sex appeal. <laughs> all those guys threaten to draw their piece. <laughs> I I forget what the exact line is. There's a good so early on. I think it's like it's not uh, when the storm is like fully raging, but it's like the beginnings of it, and Lear's uh-huh. like trekking through it. Maybe to, I think it's be- when he's between Goneril and Reagan's place, and he's like yelling and ranting about how he hopes that Goneril is barren. There's some <laughs> there's some good language in there. <laughs> it's a uh, it's a good time. Yeah, I also just like when you're reading this kind of thing and you're just reading it, it's just really funny when like Edmund gives his like big speech right before the fight, and then it's just like, hey, they fight and he falls. It's just like yeah. the immediate like swing of that because you don't <laughs> get to. There's no like description of the fight or anything. It's just like, yep, he's done. It's like, yeah. I'm the I'm gonna fucking kill you. I'm the best. Oh no, I'm dead. Help! Oh no. Oh. Oh, Edmund. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah, we we read this after Othello, so... Yeah. Edmund definitely felt like watered-down Iago. Yeah, for sure. He's not... Like, he has... Yeah, like we said earlier, he has all these plans and stuff, but the plan is, like... Let it fold out, or let it uh, unfold as it would anyway. Pretty much, he's just like got these two ladies who want to bone him. Yeah, and he kind of never works out at anything beyond that. Yeah, <laughs> he gets he gets murdered before it really comes to a head. <laughs> uh, he does get he just he has that one good speech. He gets his brother exiled, and then uh. And he gets those two ladies horny. That's about it. But he doesn't do anything about it. There's like a thing with him, I think, trying to like decide, isn't there? 
Like, yes. There's a little scene, like, his... dedicated to him, like, hmm. To him being a bitch about, like, just not actually deciding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he doesn't come to any, uh, <laughs> conclusions. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't even get to gouge out anyone's eyes. No. That's Cornwall gets to do that, and then immediately die. Yeah. I just entirely forgot what I was going to (laughs) say. Just fucking left. It was like King Lear, and then just it fucking left me. It was something about about the weeds. I don't know. I'm sure it was a good thought. Um, We should all appreciate that I had a good thought that did not translate into words. Other than that, though. I... So, why was... Do you remember why France was, like, invading? They were just going to invade anyway, right? Or was it because... I I think the point was to reinstate... Lear, like fully. Lear. Okay, I I forgot if it was like a thing that they were that was kind of teetering to begin with, or if it was directly due to the, like the events of the play. All I know is that Cordelia Cordelia like comes in like the hero, like Gandalf on the third dawn or whatever, <laughs> Just shows up. Yeah, and Lear Lear accepts her. Right? He's not like, oh, it's you. Like, because by that like, point. He's like, who are you? And oh, like, right. Because he's like still insane at that point. Right. He's right, insane. Right. Yeah. Right. It's yeah, not, yeah. That's the, the problem yeah, is he's like so that, crazy. That it's timeline. hard to, to take what he says that seriously. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's like. Yeah, that makes sense that he would fall back on an earlier emotional state where he liked her, because he's fucking mad. Yeah. Because, like, really, uh, he did like her. He just was... She didn't show him proper respect. Yeah, she didn't fucking respect his authority. She didn't suck his cock, so she's gotta go. No, dear. Metaphorically. 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 Suck his cock. I mean... Metaphorically. Basically, Game of Metaphor. Thrones. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> it's old school. Mm, I was actually, I, I was actually anyone. Uh, I don't remember anyone yelling at a storm in Game of Thrones. Could you imagine it though? I mean, it's hard to because neither of us no. have seen it. <laughs> I've, um, I've watched all. I watched. Wow, some Game of fucking traitor! How dare you? I watched that. I watched. The big episode, Red Wedding. Just, yeah. I watched like the the first three episodes, like some one episode, like ha- parts of ones while my parents were watching. I watched the Red Wedding episode and like the mm-hmm. next episode. Then I didn't watch till like the last season, and I watched like all of the last season except the first episode. Okay, that's uh, like a thousand times more than I have. Mm-hmm. I feel betrayed. I also but okay. I listened to a podcast about the whole thing that went through it episode by episode. Right, right, right. It was, yeah. it was the big thing I did. But see, the key is that last season that I watched is the season where Game of Thrones fans were like, this is kind of bad. Is that the one where they did all the time skipping? <laughs> well, that's it's the one where they're past the books. Right, yeah. Yep. That'll happen. Um, yeah, so I actually... One of the things that I also kind of like about King Lear is the setting. Like, the fact that it's, like... I think... I was trying to look for it, and I only found one source that I didn't really feel comfortable putting in my paper. Because it was, like, one of those half-ish ones that made sense and it had good arguments, but mm-hmm. just couldn't be used. They were estimating the time to be, like, around 600 AD. And, like, there's some... Like, it's not a... The, the characters aren't Christian. Like, they're they're definitely pagans. And I don't know. I find that interesting. I tried writing about it, but I just could not find enough there to 
make it even a I half I just remember that one line I think Kent says while he's disguised about not eating fish. <laughs> There's some, like, not Something. eating fish joke in there. Mm. Is like, the one thing I remember. And, like, I, I looked at the footnote and, like, this is a joke that it's... It just doesn't really make sense anymore. Gotcha. <laughs> I mean, I'm surprised it's not a... It's not a joke about, like, eating pussy or something. You know how yeah, Shakespeare does. I mean, it is now. Welcome, <laughs> welcome to 2018. Eating fish. Eating, yeah. Eating tuna. I feel like that has to have been a thing, right? Eating tuna? Like, specifically? Yeah. Are we talking know. metaphorically like or literally about eating fish? Before we <laughs> go on. Both. <laughs> I mean, maybe Both. less of a thing. I feel like in 600 AD, hygiene was a... Yeah, that was a lot like I wouldn't want to do. I've already been down that road uh, once and managed to uh, not throw I, up. I, I mean, can't imagine 600 AD, guys. <laughs> there wasn't Listerine then either. Like, they couldn't even have the out... Yeah, I mean, I think there are, like, a lot of variations on this story, mostly just centering around the idea of a daughter not loving her dad correctly. Yeah. And him going, fuck you. But she never... Respect the patriarchy, you piece of garbage. But she never gives up on him, because she's a good person. Also, good people don't always True good daughters... Always respect the patriarchy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's can't a, let those there's a hell fucking, of a message. Those hellish women who don't respect the patriarchy properly take control. Did your dad they exile will, they you? will lead everything to ruin? Did your dad exile you? Did you not tell him <laughs> that you loved him enough? Maybe don't stop loving him. It's not his fault he's Never this stop. Way. If your dad banishes you and tells you to get the fuck out, or some other f- authority figure, just create a fake identity and b- take up that same exact role in his life. Yeah. Because he's the best, and he deserves your fucking respect. Just make sure that if you loyalty. are his daughter... Maybe disguise yourself as a dude when you come back. Because it will prevent him from fully coming on to you. It will make him question his sexuality. But, you know, it just... It'll prevent him from getting too handsy. You know, you don't want him to get too handsy. No. That's a bad no. time. You know, he would. King Lear would have imagined if, imagined if Kent came back as, like... I don't know. Katie. <laughs> Lear would have been like, wow, you really love me, huh? And then it would have just gone fucking downhill. He's already naked for like a third of the play. <laughs> <laughs> like, he talks yeah. about how he gets no respect, but like, he doesn't respect boundaries. Rodney Dangerfield would still have to wear a tie. Even Naturally. I mean, instead of a crown of weeds, he can wear, like, a tie of weed. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm all for that. For a, I mean, if the man wasn't dead, I'd be all down for a Rodney Dangerfield yeah. adaptation. Apparently, the, uh, the one of the better, if not the best, film version of King Lear is, like... Uh, 60s like Soviet production of it I think they you would like, say that no that's what the professor was talking about uh. because they capture the like the desolate wasteland or not wasteland but like the desolate landscape which translates roughly to they just went outside and filmed it in Soviet Russia uh so <laughs> fair enough that authenticity fair enough yeah I feel like modern modern versions it's more minimalistic about 
just King Lear yelling on a stage. Yeah. It's been the, so been boring. Kind of the thing more recently. Well, you got Patrick Stewart to do it. That's true. That's true. <laughs> it's kind of perfect for that role of yeah. being an old crazy man yelling. And we, uh, I mean, good at it. it's also nice. Like we went, uh, we went through Antony and Cleopatra, and Professor talked about how, like, yeah, a lot of plays will either skimp out on a chunk of the scenes or just not bother doing the play because there's like a thousand scenes and half of them are four lines. So that are set like thousands of miles apart. So you have to do a full scene change for each one. Mm. Like it's easier these days thanks to technology, but hey, nobody got time for that back in back in the day. I think the last Yeah, the last um film version of Shakespeare that I watched that I really liked was like years ago now but in like 2012 uh joss whedon did a uh, a black and white just like filmed at his house with actors he'd worked with before version of much ado about nothing okay that i really liked nice just like super casual so it was so it's not the leonardo dicaprio version of romeo and juliet no surprising Mercutio was real good. I don't like that movie. <laughs> I just don't like how it looks and like how it moves. You didn't envision Mercutio as a black dude in a tutu? I mean, I it's not I don't care about that stuff. It's what I don't it's how the film is shot and it moves and like I mean, that's Yo, we're talking about swords, but we're showing guns and like the way it's like so fucking in your face about it. It's like it's not a big you could do that, but don't suck your own dick about it so much, maybe. Yeah. I remember <laughs> that's like the Mercutio bit is the only thing I remember from watching it, because we watched it in like grade nine. So mm-hmm. we all had a laugh about it. And then promptly forgot everything else because it's fucking grade nine. And why are we reading Shakespeare? Stop. No, man. You got to read. Macbeth was cool, though. Macbeth yeah. was pretty good. I did read him and Juliet like four years in a row in middle school. Like, yeah, they kept came up doing a lot. it. You did like. I like, uh, do other. Am I, am I thinking of something else? Is there like a. I swear to God, I'm thinking of something else. It's, maybe it's not Hamlet. Maybe it just starts with an H. Is there like a... King Henry? Not King Henry. It wasn't Shakespeare. Oh. Was okay. there like a a colorful set piece in Hamlet? Not like in the play, but like, you know, there's a play within a play. Like a mask? Did he wear a mask at any point? Did he wear a mask? I just I remember... remember. Maybe I'm thinking, like, I don't think there's any play piece called, like, Harlequin or anything. Like, Harlequin. Harlequin. I don't, I swear to God it was Hamlet, but all I remember is, like, it was grade two and we had to do this really colorful background for some reason. That was, like, mosaic stained glass sort of thing with a bunch of colors. There were, like, a mask and, like, someone had to wear, the main character had to wear, like, all white. And, I have no idea. Yeah, like reading Hamlet, I'm like, this doesn't seem like the thing that I thought it was. <laughs> but also, I don't know what that thing was. I remember drawing, for Hamlet, the thing I remember drawing was the ear of Denmark. <laughs> and poison <laughs> pouring into it. Yeah. <laughs> so you draw an ear on Denmark, uh-huh. on like a map of Denmark, and you draw a poison pouring into it. Done. Yeah. Art. I remember, uh, well, not even, like, remember, but it wasn't terribly long ago when I was going through a bunch of Greek mythology and I read whatever story about what's his name and what's her name who love each other and there's, like, a wall separating them. They decide to run off in secret or blah, blah, blah. It's Romeo and Juliet, but instead of poison, it's, like, a lion. 
attacks the guy <laughs> and he like gets away but he's a little bloody and like the tiger oh. or the lion rips off part of his cloak and the chick finds it and then kills herself and he kills himself <laughs> and the flowers are dyed red and that's how this flower is red now that's hilarious and, like, it would have been funnier though if bitch. it were Romeo and Juliet but then they both like hugged and jumped into a lion's mouth that then just ate them <laughs> that would be perfect that would be a thing that would definitely have been an ending i would have not expected it a weird thing about romeo and juliet adaptations is like how many things are like let's do romeo and juliet but they live it honestly makes yeah. more sense than them dying and killing themselves i mean also i because... find it kind of insane that like Hey, let's have teenagers read this story about teenagers who f- kill themselves. I mean, that's the thing. Like, how old are Romeo and Juliet? Like, fucking 14 or some bullshit? Well, they Juliet's really young? super young. Isn't she? Yeah. Romeo is like. I thought he was like 17. Okay. I, I was like, you can't something. be more. You can't be 18. I thought like 16, 14, somewhere, somewhere in that area. If you actually think about how old they are, it's kind of gross. I mean, no, older than she is. Yeah. Like, I think that's a problem. Nobody's putting the, that spin on it. They're all like, okay, let's get a bunch of, like, 30 and 20-year-olds, maybe. Just have older people play it. Like, no, dude, you gotta get the kids in there and make it a disturbing, fucked-up tale. Because it is. I I assume you're... Right, Juliet's, like, 13. Yeah. Hell yeah. Go Shakespeare. <laughs> I feel like Romeo is like 15 then. 14, 15. I didn't think he was that much older than her. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't think he... Uh, e- you know what? Either way. Either way, it's pretty fucked up. Also, they're never that young in any adaptation. <laughs> No. I've ever seen. No, because everybody wants, like, even if they have them die at the end, they still want that romantic aspect. And as soon as you make one of them 13 and the other, like, 17, pretty hard to sell that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Well, they also also cut that out of a lot of versions. And the... They don't find a room for them to bone. Like, I, I don't know how many... How many, like, actual film... I, I assume, like, plays wouldn't do it, but film versions, maybe. Like, wherefore art, thou, wherefore art thou, Romeo? Like, she's not looking for him. She's asking why it's him. <laughs> like, <laughs> she's not asking where is Romeo. She's asking why he's, like, of that family. But, no, nope, we gotta have Juliet, like, looking left and right on the balcony. <laughs> Yeah, man. Ugh. I've seen um, sitcom adaptations of Romeo and Juliet where the characters are putting on the play. Yeah. Look, it's true to terrible high school productions of Romeo and Juliet. Same Actually, I think my younger brother gave the best performance of any bit of Romeo and Juliet I've ever seen because... They do, like, a cabaret thing in high school, and, it, like, you know, if you're going from, like, band to choir, or, like, a individual singer to the full choir, like, there's some stands that need to be set up and all that shit, so they, like, have to wheel stuff out and all that. And, well, they do this, they do skits. And one of them was a one-man play, or a one-man play of a scene of Romeo and Juliet. So, like, my brother walks on stage wearing a costume that is half Romeo, half Juliet. Like... Mm-hmm tore a dress in half and sewed it onto whatever and he's just like going back and forth it was pretty uh, it was pretty good most enjoyable adaptation i've seen in a while also worked well because it was supposed to be bad Mm -hmm. that's fair yeah so it's King Lear, your favorite. What's your favorite Shakespeare play at this point? I'm like, 
I want to say King Lear just because it's one, but like that's kind of also a cop out right now because it's like the one I know the best. So uh -huh. and it's like the first, it's like that first one after the 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 flip. So like mm -hmm. now I need to go back at some point and check out the other ones now that I'm not like hating them from the start. But now that I... you're, your previous biases have been cleared up a bit. Yeah, I I don't know. Even even for uh, for like disliking the whole general ordeal at the time, Othello Othello was pretty good. Othello was Othello, pretty Othello's good. Pretty good. There, I mean, there are, there are a lot of good Shakespeare plays. Yeah, Antony and Cleopatra really hated it. Absolute trash. Not a fan. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Like, I don't know that there's anything redeeming about it. To me, yeah, mm -hmm. well, I just don't like, like, Antony can't even kill himself. <laughs> he fucking tries, like, three times, and it, <laughs> like, with a sword. It's not like he's taking two painkillers. Like, the dude stabs himself and can't do it. Uh, All I'm saying is there's only one Shakespeare play. That has the stage direction exit pursued by bear. Uh huh. That uh. Wait, 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 wait. I got this. <laughs> okay, let's narrow it down. It's not King Lear. It's not King Lear. No. Yeah. Okay. It's. I really don't think it's Othello. It's not. Okay. Um. It's not Antony and Cleopatra. It's not Hamlet. It's not Winter's Tale. It's not much to, much ado about nothing. It is not. Is it Midsummer Night's Dream? No. Shit. I feel like I'm gonna fucking hit myself. What is it? Uh, Winter's Tale. It's Winter's Tale. Fuck. <laughs> this is uh. Wait, wait. Let me let me suss it out. Um. It's after, is it after somebody dies or is supposed dead and then the other person is like looking at him and a bear chases him off or something? I mean, it's before they're... <laughs> I, I, I like can picture it in my mind, but I don't know what part. A character is eaten by a bear, yes. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's Asshole Prince, right? Antigonus. Sure. Like, the the guy who talks a tough game and then gets his ass kicked. And eaten by a bear? The, 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 the step prince. The stepson or whatever. Look, I don't actually remember the play very well beyond Exit There's, Pursuit that's by it, Bear yeah. being the greatest stage direction in all of literature. Actually, I think my favorite... Fuck, I can't... Do you remember any of the basic plot... Because that's going to be a determiner here. There's Winter's Tale, and there's another one that I can't think of the name of. Does Winter's Tale have uh, have the the chick disguising herself as a dude? Shit, I um, can't I think, think of so. the name of the other one. It's bothering me so much. My favorite stage direction is Exit Back Into Trunk. This guy... I don't think it's Winter's Tale. It's like somebody's name. It's not it's not necessarily a tragedy, like it has a decent ending. Um I wouldn't call it a comedy maybe. But this guy makes a bet. Him and his him and his uh him and his lover, love, I guess, are separated because she's a princess or nobility or whatever. And, like, her parents don't approve. So he goes off, he's, like, half-exiled. And he goes off and they, like, exchange two things to, like, promise to be faithful to each other and stuff. And Guy immediately makes a bet with some other dude who is all like, I could probably get with your girl if I wanted to. He's like, no, you couldn't, she loves me a lot. He's like, no, I definitely could. And then they bet on it. So the, the guy is like... 
he doesn't try to sleep with her. Instead, he like shows up at her door and is like, hey, I'm here on behalf of your boyfriend, and he really loves you. Also, this trunk has many valuables in it. Could you store it in your bedroom? And she says yes, and then when she's not looking, he gets into the trunk and pops out of it at night and writes a bunch of shit down that only someone who would be in her bed might know. And he, like, steals her bracelet or whatever. And when he's done, he goes back into the trunk for the rest of the night. So, exit back into trunk. Like, just, I don't know, slowly crouching back into it, like, with the lid. Yeah. Symboline, I think, is the... Symboline, yep, 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 that's the one. Symboline. Symboline. You got there. I knew yeah. it was somebody. But that one doesn't name. involve a bear. It does so not. It's it does not. inherently less good. What if? <laughs> what if it's a cross? What if there was a crossover adaptation and the bear exits into the trunk? That would be top tier. That character is everything. Is the it's like? I mean, any you know what? Like any play, everything exactly the same, <laughs> but one character is just a bear, and nobody it's inherently like, better. Yeah. Bear, bear exits funnier, in the trunk. More dramatic. <laughs> King Lear is a bear. <laughs> Fucking out the storm, like... <laughs> just the yelling. Just bearing it's at much, the storm. It's much harder to uh, say those speeches in bear, though. I disagree. <laughs> Imagine in the beginning when it's like him getting, like... I don't know the the word. All the hi- hyperbolic uh, praise from his daughters. And the bear is like putting its hands over its heart and like yep. making happy bear sounds. And then Cordelia says her thing and the bear just like cold stares at her. And then yeah. like grunts once and then she <laughs> leaves. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, it could work. I don't I don't know if the bear could sell oh let me wipe the mortality off of my hand first. <laughs> It just wipes its paw on itself. Yeah, but I don't think you get the <laughs> full effect. Do we want some like titles for the bear? His hand was clean. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that'd probably help if you turn them on. No, nope, like, not the full... all the time. Just sometimes. <laughs> just sometimes. <laughs> I mean, the upon a wheel of fire that mine own tears do scald like molten lead. That would be a good like subtitle to have with a bear grunt. Just actually molten lead pouring out of its face. <laughs> okay, so for King Lear, yeah, would the ending be improved if King Lear is a bear, and it turns out that Cordelia was just playing dead so that the bear would leave? No, no. Cordelia dies, Okay, and then tearfully and the King Lear eats her body, <laughs> and then dies. Oh, the (laughs) indigestion, though. Exactly. And then everybody else is crying. (laughs) Just watching this scene. Everyone is tearfully crying as the bear slowly... Well, the terrible part is that the bear walks in with Cordelia's corpse, consumes her, and then dies. And everybody is just watching this happen. Yeah. He's, like, holding her in his mouth, and then lays her down, and then slowly... (laughs) Consumes her. (laughs) Yes. Hell yeah. <laughs> okay, so is your is your favorite favorite Shakespeare just Are you going hard on the bear bit? Or is um, it actually like Othello or something? It's probably Hamlet. Wow, what a it's generic ass here. answer. And it's <laughs> Hamlet's really good though. <laughs> yeah. It's the problem. Problem is that Hamlet's very good. Well, Macbeth is also Macbeth Hamlet, is Macbeth, really Othello. In no particular any of those, order. Any of those could be my favorite. Mm-hmm. I would say Macbeth that's my really top good. tier. Hamlet is like. I also need to revisit that. I had it too many times in a row. Like I had it, yeah, I think three semesters in a row. That's too many semesters to enjoy Hamlet by the end of it. Uh, one of my favorite comic book writers, Ryan North, wrote a choose-your-own-adventure book version of 
Hamlet. It's called To Be or Not To Be. Nice. Where you get to pick if you play as Hamlet, Ophelia, or King Hamlet's ghost. Obviously, you go for the ghost. <laughs> like, 100%. Also, the the uh, the conceit of that is that Shakespeare just played the most boring options of the story, and then published it under his own name, like a thief. <laughs> yeah, I can get behind it. Yeah. Then he did a. He also he followed it up with a Romeo and Juliet version, and then a uh, a. Tr- did another one that was just short stories that was just called Shakespeare Punch- Punches a Shark. I think. <laughs> Hell yeah. They're pretty good. Also, To Be or Not To Be is on Steam also for some reason. Oh. So it was like a graphic novel? Or like a... like a, It's wait, basically it like, like the a... audiobook version, but there are... Okay. But it's like, There's like video game. That... Yeah, because okay. it's Choose Your Own Adventure. So, so it's like a... Why can't I think of the fucking name of that genre? Adventure game? No. Choose your own adventure. I'm going to find this out. Hold up. I'm going to suss this out. Visual novel. Yeah. Well, yeah, but visuals are not probably... Only like the... um, Basically, every ending, when you hit hit an end, it has a... a, uh, a drawing and he got a bunch of his artist friends to do it so there's lots of various styles and stuff throughout gotcha also there's one part where it becomes like a like a zork type game where you're like playing as no no that's in the there's definitely a part in the romeo and juliet one where you start playing as the nurse and then it's like do you want to go east west or north <laughs> <laughs> Goes That's pretty line. great. Just yeah, fully. text adventure. <laughs> there are there sub games in there too. Nice, That's good stuff. Good stuff. So yeah, King Lear is uh, it's pretty good. Yeah, even if like you know, I mean, it had to be there had to be some good in it objectively because like I fucking hated Shakespeare when I started that paper and going through it and I was okay with it by the end Either that or Stockholm Syndrome and yeah (laughs) that could also be but the important thing is that you you put thought behind the things you feel rather than just feeling raw emotion for no reason yeah or based on you know some first glance superficial reason like maybe banishing your daughter because she says, um, I love you like the proper amount. Okay. okay. Fucking go hyperbole here. Thought you were, uh, thought you were going to say Takata's pants and I was already like formulating <laughs> a, re- a lengthy rebuttal. <laughs> it was totally different. <laughs> no, that's, yeah, no, you're correct. That's totally different. In that's just your fashion sense. In your my strong, adaptation. Strongly, firmly held beliefs about fashion. Is it belief? And pants. Or would literally everyone in the higher fashion world agree with me? If Cordelia was wearing Takato's pants, I'd fucking banish her on sight. <laughs> like, Goneril walks in, elegant dress. Reagan walks in, elegant dress. Cordelia walks in, fucking half ass sweatpants capris. Get the fuck out. You get nothing. <laughs> and she just goes, and the French guy is like, "Yeah, I dig it." Do you, I don't know. Do maybe you got Cordelia do- could pull goggles? it off. I just because Takato could pull it off doesn't mean Cordelia couldn't. I mean, like that's true. All she has I to will do is say, not be I think shaped girls like are pear. inherently better at pulling off those pants that don't go all the way down to your ankles. I mean, no, that's fine. <laughs> And that's true. I, the problem was also that, uh, like, there was no. I don't know how to phrase this exactly. There was no overlap with his shirt and his pants. They, like, met and were the same exact. Like, his shirt wasn't a little bit more billowy. Like, they were the exact same tightness. 
Yeah, that's because they meeting. didn't have an animation budget. <laughs> I mean, at the first, like, it got better. At the first episode was just super noticeable. And he was shaped like a fucking hair. <laughs> there was just a lot of problems, dude. Like... <laughs> uh, it's funny, because I don't have the... I couldn't begin to care about this, and you care so much. If I was in a Shakespeare play, and Takata was in a Shakespeare play, I would 100% be the Iago to his Othello. I just wouldn't have to, like, insinuate that someone banged his wife. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. And there wouldn't be any racial... Overtones either. Probably not. I'd just be roasting him over his choice of <laughs> pants. <laughs> Fuck your pants. Someone else right. gets drunk and I'd be like, catch a load of the captain's pants. <laughs> and then shit would just start and it'd be a fellow. But yeah, that's. And then people uh, couldn't unsee it. People could. <laughs> yeah, people could. That's the thing. You gotta get them thinking about it. Yeah. It's the most people just, just like passes over them. But the mm. ones you know. Just yeah, yeah. Then everyone see. can't unsee it. They're all like uncomfortable around him now. Probably because like, like, why are his d- pants so terrible? Like why? Like why did I, I mean, not notice before? Yeah, yeah. All right. I think that's a podcast. I mean, it's a perfect note to end on. So it's true. It's always the right note to end on. Digimon. <laughs> you can email us at saltcirclepodcast at gmail dot com. Find us on soundcloud dot com slash saltcircle. Twitter at Salt Circle Pod. We are Salt Circle Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play Music, various podcast feeds, and I'm on Twitter at Comic Panels. I'm on Twitter at Bean underscore LP. And presumably, uh, there will be a Kickstarter linked where you can fund our bear adaptations of various Shakespeare plays. <laughs> Just gotta wipe off that mortality.